Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net. I've recently been inspired by YouTube channels like TechMone, uh, who does really good reviews of old technology, as well as the 8-Bit Guy, who also does some really good look at uh, older technology, older computers, and older computer hardware. And I got to thinking, wow, there's a lot of old hardware that I got my hands on, a lot of old software and technology that I got my hands on over the past couple of decades that I don't think anybody's actually had a good look at recently. Now, you guys remember when I used to actually do uh, videos and stuff in front of this bookshelf. I don't usually do it anymore because this is a bit of a tougher area to film. But uh, you might notice over that shoulder right there, I actually have a couple of movies in the background right below my Blu-ray section. Particularly, you'll probably notice over there, I have copies of Sin City, Kill Bill Volume 1, Clerks, Tron, and a couple of other movies. Now, you're probably asking yourself, hold on a second. Those movies came in a very similar case to what old PlayStation Portable games used to come in. And they're mar clearly marked UMD format. But, wait a second. Those movies are, are those movies on DVD? Are those on Blu-ray? What the heck are they? I've never heard of this UMD format. UMD video was a little experiment that Sony conducted back in the mid to late 2000s to release a video format exclusively for the Sony PlayStation Portable. Their intention was to take the UMD discs that were already used in Sony PSP games like The Third Birthday, for example, and to release a basically just video files on top of it. The cool thing about it was, was that while Sony actually made a proprietary uh, format of the game media, particularly uh, for the PlayStation Portable, they didn't really lock uh, proprietary formatting down for videos. So it wasn't exactly an issue of manufacturing or uh, video conversion and stuff like that. Sony freely released the specs on how to make UMD video uh, and how to, uh, how to release UMD video for the PlayStation Portal because they wanted studios to actually embrace the format. So when the format launched, only a couple of actual movies were actually released. Only two studios, Sony Pictures and Disney, actually released uh, films for it. And for a while, we thought that maybe that was going to be it. But it had a really good initial launch of pretty good sales. I'll, I'll get into why I think that might be later on. But um, as that happened, uh, later uh, uh, later on, Extra Movie Studios started releasing uh, their own movies for the format. And for a while, it looked like the UMD video format might have actually been a great thing. Yeah, if you ask me, that I think Sony actually did a fantastic job um, promoting the UMD video format before the format was even released. Anybody who was an early adopter of the Sony PlayStation Portable in the initial release lot actually got a special edition uh, package value, called the Value Pack for the Sony PlayStation Portable, including a UMD video release in its entirety, not a sampler, of Spider-Man 2 on UMD. Arguably the best film of 2004, and I stand by that decision. Well, there were only two studios that actually supported the video format at launch, uh, Disney and, of course, Sony Pictures. The format actually did have a pretty damn good launch, and I know that there were a lot of people out there that wondered why. Let me explain it to you, at least because I have my own theories as to why the format actually did really well when it first started off. Um, people wanted to be able to watch their movies on the go. Uh, iPods were expensive, and uh, video uh, iPods that could play video were a little bit still uh, I, I don't remember if those were available around 2005 or so, but um, if they were, if they were, they were still pretty expensive, and they could only really play videos and movies. The Sony PlayStation Portable, on the other hand, had a bit of a longevity to it, given the fact that it was a games console, so it could play its own games. It could also play your music on UMD format as well as on Memory Stick. And it could also run these movies. So I think that, um, and also as a DVD owner at the time, I didn't really have a problem with repurchasing movies I was interested in for the fact that I wanted to be able to play them on the go.
So I think that uh, Sony was right to launch the UMD when they did. Let's take a quick look at uh, basically this particular movie. This is Hellboy uh, Director's Cut on PlayStation Portable. This was actually a launch title for the PlayStation Portable UMD format. Now I'm just going to open this up just really quick so you can take a quick look at it, what's inside. Now if you take a look here, you're going to see that what's inside this particular thing really isn't all that different from a normal UMD disc that you'd find for a Sony PlayStation Portable game. I'm sure a lot of you have been saying, and you're welcome to ask, well, the Sony PSP has a widescreen screen, not exactly 16 by 9, but certainly a widescreen. Are UMD films in widescreen, or, they, or are they at some other type of aspect ratio, like 4 by 3? And the answer is, it depends upon the manufacturer. Any film released on UMD by Sony itself is actually in a cropped widescreen format, uh, specifically formatted for the Sony PSP screen resolution. It is not, I repeat, not at the proper aspect ratio. Even if the movie is shot at like a 16 by 9 ratio, you're still going to have at least part of the screen kind of cut off. I can't, I can't tell if it's the sides or if it's the top that's cut off. But you're going to see, at least for a Sony release, some, you know, some cropping. However, for pretty much any other formatted release, whether it be Disney or whether it be for Warner Brothers, I have noticed that um, the movie will actually be released in the proper aspect ratio. Uh, usually, it'll actually allow you to adjust if you want to see black bars or not, similar to if you have a video or film stored on a memory stick and it's not at the exact aspect ratio of the PSP screen you can actually just tap a button into the video players uh, menu and adjust the screen however you want you could stretch it you could crop it you could zoom in whatever whatever you want and I know that uh, widescreen televisions offer this feature as well uh, for UMD movies made by other manufacturers other than Sony, you do have that option. Um, it is at the proper widescreen aspect ratio. I have no idea why Sony decided to go it alone for actually not offering uh, proper aspect ratio films. Um, pretty much everybody has been releasing films on the proper aspect ratio since DVD took off. So that was a little unusual. I don't know why Sony decided to go against that. Another question I just know people are going to ask me is, does the UMD videos actually come with any special features? And once again, just like with aspect ratio, it comes down to specifically the disc and the manufacturer. I really haven't seen Sony pictures or any Sony releases actually get released with any special features at all. But occasionally speaking, a Disney release actually would get the same special features or most of the special features that actually would get included on the UN, on, on the DVD disc. As you can see, Kill Bill Volume 1, when it was released on DVD, only had like one special feature, basically, a, a brief making of. And that was actually included on this UMD disc. This is actually a pretty good translation of the DVD release. As for Clerks, um, this actually is a port not of the original Clerks uh, DVD, which was in fact a port of the Clerks Laserdisc, but this is actually ported off of the Collector's Edition Clerks X DVD, which is the 10th anniversary Clerks DVD, and it actually has some special features that were actually included on the Clerks X DVD, including the lost scene. And I was really excited about that because that was um, so. This is actually a really good. Uh, this was actually a really good UMD release. However, movies like The Matrix, as far as I remember, didn't really include any special features at all. Nor did um, nor did uh, any of the Sony releases. However, I have to say that um, when you're getting a format like this, you really don't care about special features. I, I'll be honest, I really didn't care too much about special features because I remember specifically Sin City. When Sin City launched um, on DVD and UMD at the same time, it had a simultaneous format release. Uh, the original Sin City was a bare-bones DVD release, very disappointing. It didn't really include special features, although we were told that a later special features loaded uh, DVD release was on its way, which it was. I remember thinking, well, what's the point of me? I wanted to see the movie again after I saw it in theaters and remembered enjoying it quite a bit in theaters. But I remembered actually that um, 
I wanted a special, I, I was very much, I wanted a special features release. I preferred DVDs with special features releases. So when Sensity launched on home video, I actually completely just ignored the DVD release and got the UMD release instead. And um, while this did actually come with a behind the scenes featurette, I wouldn't end up picking up Sin City on DVD until there was a fantastic DVD special edition released a couple months to a year later. So I was really happy about that. For those of you wondering how far Sony was planning on taking this format, well, I can tell you that right now. I have seen in used game stores, UMD music. I know, I'm not kidding about it. Apparently, Sony had prepared to release just UMD albums, or basically albums that you would normally be able to find on your CD player. Uh, Nirvana's Nevermind exists in UMD format. I ha don't have a copy of it myself. I never saw one on shelves new, and I usually don't buy used games unless it's something that uh, I really, really want to get my hands on. But... Yeah, Sony had a lot of plans for this format, and it's really surprising to see how far they were going to take it. Konami also released this. This is the Silent Hill Experience on UMD Video. Now, I know it says UMD Video on the label, but for the life of me, I don't know what you would call this. This doesn't actually include a UMD movie of Silent Hill movie or anything along those lines. This is basically a UMD full of special features. As you can see here on the back of the box, you can see that this includes, and I'm not kidding about this, two hours of digital comics, including the first ever uh, digital comic series and uh, its own exclusive digital comic series called The Hunger. There's also uh, documentaries, behind the scenes uh, interviews with people that worked on the game, people that worked on the first Silent Hill movie. Is this what the future of UMD was, was thinking about? I, I, I tried doing some research to see if there was anything else like this, and I haven't been able to find anything like it at all. Uh, especially, it, it's a little tougher to know. Maybe that maybe in Japan other stuff could be found and stuff like that. But for the most part, this is, I think, what a possibility for what the future of UMD was to hold had Sony actually decided to continue forward with the format. Kind of interesting, I think, and kind of an interesting side note in um, in video game history. I know you're asking, so you can just ask it right now. If the format is as good as I say it was, and it quality was just as good as, let's say, the DVD of its time, then why did the format fail? I've got two answers for you to answer that question. One, the PSP Go, and two, the iPod Video. Let's be honest. This was never going to be the future. When it came to portable video formats, the answer was always going to be digital. Having a transitional media like this was a novelty which solved a lot of problems given the limitations on in the expense of storage space of the time. But that was only a temporary issue. Within no time at all, the Sony PSP was launching with very high capacity uh, memory sticks uh, and on top of that uh, manufacturers like Apple were releasing portable devices with you know large capacity hard drives certainly enough to fit compressed SD video so this was never the solution as great as it was let's be honest I really wept for this for this service when it died pretty quickly about a year after the videos uh the for video format was launched walmart stopped stocking it saying that um the novelty pretty quickly wore off and the sales just weren't there anymore by that point a lot of manufacturers like warner brothers had already jumped in there were other retailers like best buy which continued to stock the format but it was clear by that point that once walmart put pulled out their support a lot of manufacturers and a lot of video publishers were pretty much done I still say it had a pretty good run while it did. It had a lot of good it had a lot of good movies that were ended up getting released on it. But it was clear to many people that when Sony actually released the PSP Go, which had no support for UMD whatsoever, they were just done with this. And that was I think one of Sony's biggest blunders in their history. 
So I hope you enjoyed this little look back into the past of the Sony PlayStation uh, Portable. I've had a lot of fun talking about it. Until next time, guys, my name is Maniac with GameAccess.net. Take care. Over and out.